80,000 subscribers is our target. Then two lucky winners will be able to choose five wallets of their choice for my inventory. Noisy birds. Anyway, if we haven't reached 80,000 yet, you still have a chance. Subscribe now. Now send Step Mother Earth into orbit. Getting into orbit shouldn't be that hard, especially when you have the RX Orbit Passport Wallet. But when it comes to passport wallets, what do you really need to carry besides the passport? See you in orbit! <laughs> Arox. They always come in this wonderful padded bag. If you've seen my prior reviews on their wallets, you can use this for something else. So let's open this up. Oh, there we go. Here is the Orbit. It is sizable. Now, granted, I don't have a huge hand, but you know, it is pretty big. It also comes in gray, black, and green. This is the brown color. Well, thank you too. Hey, let's see. Let's take a quick look as it came out of the pouch. Nice. So we're really not gonna go into orbit, but this does provide the ability to travel the globe. There are loads of things in this wallet, so when the feature review is done, let's talk about what's really needed. Externally, this has no features, but as soon as we go to the interior, we have one, two, three, four card slots that are right in our face. I suppose one to two cards per slot. Now, we go in here, we notice we have one right here, billfold pocket, and a second right behind it. So you have two places to be able to store separate currencies, a boarding pass will certainly fit in here, and uh, you know that makes sense. Now here in the back, inside the first billfold pocket, we have two secret card slots, one and two right there. I'm not sure why other than, hey, look, I have two more card slots. And then right here, we have a key slot. Why? Well, I'm gonna be traveling away from my lock, so I don't know. And then here on the back is the main purpose of this wall. Right here is the passport slot where you put your passport. And finally, right here in the back, it has a SIM card slot as well as your pin push for SIM cards. And that's a quick review of the features. It measures 5.7 by 4 by 0.5, and it weighs 95 grams, or 3.4 ounces. Loads of features. Are you keeping track? Now let's load this thing up. You notice I got six cards in here, four in the front, and one in each of these uh, secret areas. What I didn't quite like is that this card here sticks up a little higher. You can see it right there. Okay, better, much better. I had to get 10 notes in here from all the different countries. The wall is tall enough to handle it, as it should be, because really it's the passport that we have in here. Let me put a key right in here, since I didn't do that. And just to kind of finish this out, all right. Right there. There we go. We have a key in there now. This is designed and made in Pakistan. It's made of thin cut full grain veg tan leather from Southeast Asia. And it really is thinly cut. I mean, it has to be because of all these pockets, uh, all of the functionality that we see in here. And I've reviewed so, several other wallets and the quality of the leather is very good. Hmm, at least it smells good. And you can see from the the measurements, uh, this this was nearly almost an inch thick. And that's without putting in many more cards. I only have six cards in here, 10 uh, slips of cash, and the passport. So it's pretty significant. These final edges here are wrapped. And uh, that's not a bad thing. And you can tell they've treated the edges, so this should last quite a bit of time. And you can see that we've got reinforcement in all the places you'd expect. There are some I wish they had, like right up in here, where we have the intersection of the two billfold pockets, because they're gonna be opened a lot like this. In addition, uh, a couple other places like right here in the edge would have been nice, but they have done it in many spots. Another nice thing is that this, these leather uh, slots go all the way down. You'll find in a lot of wallets that it will have a topper of leather and then you'll have, you know, have material down here, nylon or something. Not the case. This leather goes all the way down. So this is a proper leather wallet. With that, it costs $90, which is pretty reasonable considering most other passport wallets are like that. Let me give you an example. So, and, and how wallets should perform. So I've got 
the Carl Friedrich Weston. I've got the Nomad Passport Wallet here. This is the new Pioneer Carry. This is their Passport Wallet. And I quite like how they've approached this. And of course we have the Orbit. They're all quite large. So the point is, is do you really need something by way of a Passport Wallet that provides more functionality than you really truly need? Are you really gonna carry everything in a single big wallet? Now, despite that being said, the Orbit does handle the job just fine with the features that you might need, not necessarily what you're hoping to only use. Now, something else besides being a design interest, if we can take this transit card, we'll take this card out. You can see the slope of the leather here. A nice, interesting design, but it does help provide access into cards it's, or into cash because it doesn't come all the way over. So it opens it up just a bit more for ease of use and access. Now the Passport is fairly easy to get access to. It uh, just slides in here at the top. You can grab it, pull it out, but it's right here at the top. Now if I were to call out a few things that are concerning. One is everything seems to be face up, not out, but face up with no safety flaps, directional slot safety, etc. The billfold area key pocket here is really quite loose. And I'm just wondering if you would have anything that would fall out from here. Hmm. Yeah, not a surprise there, but then again, we have the same issue with the SIM card and the push pin. The SIM card faces up. Why? It really should face to the side. Otherwise, as this loosens over time, it could fall out. Same thing with the passport. It's sitting precariously at the top here. Again, you wanna have access, but when broken in, this could have the possibility of falling out. This isn't, I haven't even used it, and this is very easy to pull in and out. Now, due to the infrequent use, a flap would be a nice touch where uh, it could be folded into the pocket when not in use, and then over the passport to secure it. With all of that said, the overall design and attempt to provide many of the needed items and features for travel are nice, but is it really practical? I'd say no. I like to travel strategically. I will never keep my credit cards and passport in the same wallet. And I usually leave my passport at the hotel and carry a photocopy with me when I'm not at the airport or checking into a hotel or something like that. I also don't keep all my credit cards or cash on me. I split it up, leaving some of the hotel in case I'm robbed or I lose things. So what do you absolutely need with a passport wallet? Well, let me know in the comments below. In the end, the one thing most passport wallets miss is a small pen since as countries we yet haven't figured out how to make our custom forms electronic yet, dumb, I know. And now on to the final score. Quality of four. Like all Aurox products, they're built really well. Price of three, really fair price for a passport wallet. Features of four, it's still missing a pen and usability of three. Despite the placement of certain items, it is still very easy to use in perception of three. That gives us a great score, a 37 out of 50. If you like this video, then watch this one next. And remember to subscribe if you haven't yet for our 80,000 subscriber giveaway. We'll see you in the next review. Bye.